Hey guys, hello and welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and today we're going to be talking about one of the most popular topics and perhaps one of the most controversial topics in Warframe, Rivens. What are they? Where they come from? What do you use them for? How to trade, etc, etc. But let's start with the beginning. What are Rivens? Well, essentially they are mods which are locked to individual weapons. If you head on over to your mod section, you will see or not see this filter right here, which is called Riven. Now if you just started out with the game or you're a bit more newer to Warframe, you might not have this one. That simply means that you haven't acquired any Riven just yet. But don't worry about it, progress further through the story and you're gonna be getting plenty of Rivens throughout your adventures in Warframe. Now normally you don't have a capacity when it comes to mods, in the sense that you can have any number of mods you want, thousands upon thousands if that's what you're looking for. Like for example I have 777 redirections because I obviously love this almost useless mod. But in any case, back to Rivens, you will see that I have a capacity here. Riven capacity 66 out of 69 and the maximum capacity that you currently can have in Warframe is 90. How do you increase this capacity? Now you can get Riven capacity or Riven slots through a number of ways but most of us go over here to the market and type in slots and you can purchase Riven slots, Riven mod slots and you have to purchase free at a time at the cost of 60 plat. Now you do get them as a reward from doing different things and progressing for the story but you're gonna have to eventually increase your mod capacity by buying slots if you wanna evolve your Riven collection. Now let's take a look at the naming scheme for Rivens. The first thing you will see is that all of them are locked to an individual weapon and it will start off by naming that weapon. Fragor, Fusilai, Gracata, Gram, Glaxion and so on and so forth. Now these can have different layouts. For example, this uh, Hema has a double positive, but you can also have a double positive with a negative, in which case it means that those double positives will have a bigger value. You can also have a triple positive and once again you can have a triple positive with a negative. Having a negative stat on a ribbon will mean that the positive stats will be higher. Now let's say for example that I don't like the stats on this ribbon because I'm crazy. I can cycle it or how most of us refer to it as rolling ribbons. You will see that the lower right portion of the ribbon MR12 and nothing else. But if you take a look at this gram I have 26 next to the MR10 on the right side. That means that this ribbon was rolled 26 times by me and this is basically what I got. Not ideal but that's not the point here. If I want to roll this Riven I'm gonna have to pay for it with Kuva. Now Kuva is a resource that can be obtained from a number of different ways. You can do survival, you can go and do Kuva siphons, you're gonna get it from the daily sortie and cry but the point is in order to roll Rivens, you're gonna have to get a lot of Kuva and the price for rolling Rivens is going exponentially higher the more you roll but it is capping out at 3000 500 once you roll seven or eight times something like that for example if I want to roll this gram I need 3500 kuva now if you don't get the roll that you want does that mean that that kuva was totally wasted yes and no it's not a very attractive proposition but the more kuva you sink into a ribbon the higher the dissolve value as you can see this arca plasma which was rolled 72 times all of a mine all of a mine is worth 20,000 kuva if I choose to dissolve it. For example, this Arca Cisco, which is on, rolled only three times, is worth 7,060 uh, endo. One more thing that you can do with these Rivens is transmute. Combine four unranked mods for a chance at a rare mod. Now, this also applies to Rivens, however. One, two, three and four. There we go. We can have a Riven Transmute. Keep in mind you're gonna need a transmuter for this and you obtain that by doing Eidolon Hunts. And now I can click on this. Are you sure? Of course not. I'm not crazy. How do we get Rivens? How do Rivens enter the actual game? Well, this is one of the ways. People transmuting Rivens that don't, they don't want. That's why you see many players on the trade chat going for something like want to buy trash Rivens, 10 plat each or 20 plat each and so on and so forth. They are looking to transmute in the hope that they're gonna be getting something worthwhile from that transmutation. Again, you can take four Rivens that you don't want that are not very good, transmute them and hope you're gonna get something good. When you get Rivens, they're gonna be veiled and you will have to do a challenge in order to unveil them. So you're not gonna see from the start exactly for what weapon it is or uh, what stats it has on. You get something like a shotgun Riven, a rifle Riven, 
secondary or pistol riven, melee riven. So you're going to have a general understanding. You're going to know the type, okay, what slot it's going to go into. It's going to be melee, primary, secondary, and so on and so forth. But you're not going to know exactly for what weapon you're going to be getting it. Now, the very large majority, the very, very large majority of rivens are obtained by doing the daily sortie. And you may not have access to the daily sortie just yet. Progress further through the story and you're going to be gaining access. The Riven from the Sortie is a pretty common occurrence, so it's not very hard to obtain. And you're also going to be getting one for free when you complete a specific storyline. Next, what I want to do is jump into the arsenal and highlight the Atomos. Now, this is a fantastic low MR weapon, fully capable of destroying basically mostly any content in Warframe. Look at the cards right now if you guys want to see a full demonstration on it. If I jump into stats, you're gonna see I am using a Riven on it. It's an Atomos VZ Krita Mag. Now, experienced players in the game are gonna be able to approximate exactly what type of stats I have on my Riven based on the name alone, because the second part of the whole naming scheme is based on what stats you got on that Riven. So many players, when they see a Kriata or they see a Vizicron or something like that, they go crazy, oh my God, that's gonna be awesome. But it doesn't really take into account the negative. Take a look at this one. I got critical chance damage and minus weapon recall. And if you're more newer to Warframe, you might be tempted to believe that this is a double positive with a negative, because plus plus minus. But in fact, it's a triple positive. Weapon recall is a bad thing. It affects weapon handling. So having less of it means that the weapon is more stable. Therefore, that's a positive stat. And yes, I got tricked several times like that as well. Now I want to draw your attention to the left side of the weapon stats. Riven disposition 2 little balls out of 5 little balls. That means 2 out of 5 and this controls the value of the stats on your Rivens. So for example, if I had 5 out of 5, then I would not have 91.9% .9 critical chance. I would have something like 200% and 300% damage and so on and so forth. It will affect all of the stats on the Riven. How do I get a higher Riven disposition? You don't. Unfortunately, this one is controlled by the developer and it should work like this. The point of the whole disposition system was to give unpopular weapons a shot at being competitive. So therefore, popular weapons, which of course are strong, will have a very low Riven disposition. So therefore, the stats will be very low on their Rivens. And unpopular weapons, which most players don't use, will have a high Riven disposition porking out a ton and a half worth of stats. And that's kind of how Digital Extremes wanted to balance out weapons. Now, it didn't go exactly according to plan, but it did give a lot of players something to work for. Now, I want to highlight a specific case. Actually, this is how overpowered happens. This is the T-Baron Prime, one of the best assault rifles in the game. Before the Prime version was introduced, nobody used the normal version of the T-Baron because it was a subpar weapon and it wasn't very enjoyable or very effective. However, when the T-Baron Prime was introduced, the stats were much better because, of course, as with all Prime weapons, the stats are superior. The problem is that when a Prime weapon is introduced to the game, it picks up the Riven disposition of its normal counterpart. So here comes the T-Baron Prime, which already has fantastic base stats and gets a Riven disposition of full 5 out of 5. And of course, this one shot through the roof. The prices for the T-Baron Rivens went sky high overnight and so on and so forth. Now, as you can see here, it's no longer that high. It's 4 out of 5 because Digital Extremes did tweak this one a little bit with the launch of Fortuna, but it's still pretty strong and the weapon is absolutely fantastic. And the same case happened with the Exagara Prime. Now let's talk about another hot topic in Warframe, namely trading Rivens. But for that you need to understand how big Rivens are in Warframe. You have entire communities built around discussing and trading Rivens. You have Facebook groups, you have Discord bots and Discord servers, you have websites which are specialized in helping you trade Rivens and they make their revenue off of the traffic that you generate. And if you want to get a feel for how big Rivens are in Warframe, all you gotta do is head on over to the trade chat where you will see that the very large majority of want to buy and want to sell will be referring to Rivens. So again, it is a pretty big deal. Rivens didn't work exactly as the E intended them to, but they do offer a lot of players something to strive to. However, let's get back to the whole trading thing. The easiest way would be to go on the trade chat and go want to buy or want to sell. For example, maybe I want to sell my Atomos Riven, which I don't really want to do. And that's pretty much it. You can also add a PMO, but honestly, it doesn't really matter. Now, if your trade chat is not very populated, there's not a lot of people in the trade chat and you can always see right here, pretty simple. You can go into your options 
then you head on over to gameplay and you can change your region. Normally North America is the most populated but I would give Europe a try as well. But I also got from the Asia server a Riven one so there is that to take into account. But if you're anything like me, you already know that high value Rivens don't really move that fast. Rivens can get to stupid high amounts of plat. I'm talking about 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 plat, depending on how crazy the person is paying. Again, value is in the eye of the beholder, so there you go. But let me give you an example of a commonly accepted high value Riven. Rubico, Rubico Acricron with critical chance, critical damage and minus damage to corpus. Now, the value in a Riven such as this is twofold. First and foremost, it's a critical Riven for a critical weapon. So therefore you have the right stats for the right weapon. And secondly, and in this case more importantly, it's for the Rubico or better said Rubico Prime, which is one of the best weapons you can hunt Eidolons with. Eidolons are still challenging as long as you don't have gear. Yes, it can be a bit difficult until you get the necessary gear, but it's also a very lucrative occupation let's call it like that because you can get a fair bit of plat if you get the right drops so ribbons such as this can reach stupid high amounts 5,000 6,000 maybe even 10,000 plat I'm a bit out of it because I'll be honest with you guys I'm not the biggest ribbon trader I don't really care that much about them but perhaps you're like I don't know you have a lot of ribbons and you want to get rid of them and trading on the trade chat can be a bit slow especially when it comes to high value ribbons what you can do is use websites such as ribbon market I use it quite Quite often I simply made an account which was not the most easiest thing to do and I list my ribbons there and eventually people whispered me other players that want it. You can haggle, you can whatever and so on and so forth. Or you can join a Discord group or you can join a Facebook group that is dedicated to trading ribbons. If you want to be a ribbon trader go right for it. I do understand the appeal in something like that. That said I want to summarize my thoughts on ribbons and of course this will be subjective for the most part. Like other things in Warframe, I don't think that Rivens went fully according to plan. And I can't tell if D just has the devil's luck or some kind of mad genius behind all of it because ultimately what Rivens brought to some players is a form of endgame. Something to strive to, something to work for and even though I don't share that particular passion, I do respect it. There's no denying that Rivens are massively successful with fan sites, trading sites, discord groups built around it. So I do appreciate that we have a system such as this. However, there is one glaring issue that I simply cannot overlook. Any way you slice it, any way you look at it or I try to justify it, this is a slot machine. Now there are arguments pro and con to this one as well. First and foremost, Rivens are entirely optional. The game never puts you in a position where you have to have some crazy Riven in order to progress and you can get through all the content that Warframe has to offer without breaking a sweat and without ever touching a Riven. In order to roll these Rivens, you're gonna need Kuva and Kuva cannot be purchased with real money but what you can buy is boosters which will double the amount of Kuva you can get. I'll be honest here, I don't like a system such as this and I do not approve of a system such as this. But overall, considering all the goodwill I have for Digital Extremes, considering the ton and a half of value I got for basically free out of Warframe, I'm simply gonna pretend that I never saw this. Honestly, by comparison to what other developers are doing and how fair Digital Extremes is to their community, I'm just simply gonna ignore it. My enjoyment of Warframe never had anything to do with Plat and never had anything to do with Rivens and had everything to do with my friends and all of the crazy stuff that we can do from mission to mission. And I think my friends that's pretty much it. As always my name is Ben Lazar, thank you guys so much for watching, like, favorite, share and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. If you got any feedback for me, then by all means, leave it in the comment section down below. Until next time my friends, bye bye.